Welcome to Trojan Corner, The Number Devil, a Mathematical Adventure by Hans Magnus Enzensberger. The Second Night. Robert was sliding, the same old story. It had started the minute his head hit the pillow and he couldn't stop. This time he was sliding along a tree. Don't look down, he thought, clinging to the tree for dear life and sliding on and on. Then all at once he landed with a plop on a soft bed of moss. He heard a giggle, and who did he see but the number devil, perched on a velvety brown mushroom, smaller than Robert had remembered, and staring down at him with shiny eyes. How'd you get here? he asked Robert. Robert pointed to the tree trunk, which stretched as far as the eye could see. But it was not alone. There was a whole forest of them, and they weren't so much trees as ones. He had landed in a forest of ones. But that was not all. The air hummed with tiny fly-like numbers dancing in front of his nose. He tried shooing them away, but there were too many. Twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, and nines just brushing against him. Robert had always hated moths and gnats and couldn't stand having the beasts around. Are they bothering you? asked the number devil. He put his hand to his mouth and blew them all away with a poof. Suddenly, the air was clear of everything but the forest of ones reaching up to the sky. Have a seat, Robert, said the number devil. Robert was surprised to find him so friendly. Where? On a mushroom? Why not? But I'd feel silly. Where are we anyway? In a picture book? Last time you sat on a spinach leaf, and now you're on a mushroom. I seem to remember something like that. In a book I once read. The mushroom is in Alice in Wonderland, perhaps? But what's the connection between made-up story and mathematics? The kind of connection you make when you dream, my boy. You don't think I was behind all those flies, do you? No, I'm wide awake. You're the one in bed dreaming. Now what do you say? Are you going to stand there forever? Robert saw he had to do something, so he clambered onto the nearest mushroom. It was enormous, and except for a few bumps, as soft and cozy as an armchair. How do you like it? It's fine, said Robert. I just wonder who came up with number flies and the forest of ones. I couldn't have. Not in my wildest dreams. It could only have been you. And if it was, said the number devil, preening himself on his mushroom. Though there's still something missing. What? Nothing. I mean, zero. He was right. There hadn't been a single zero among all the flies. Why? Because zero was the last number to be discovered, which isn't surprising, given that zero is the most sophisticated of numbers. Here, look. And finding a space between two, three high ones, he wrote some letters in the sky with his walking stick. M, C, M. Tell me, when were you born, Robert? Me? 1986, said Robert a bit reluctantly. M, C, M, L, X, 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 V, I, wrote the number double. I know what those are. Those are old numbers you sometimes find in the cemetery. And they come from the ancient Romans, who had a tough time of it, by the way, partly because their numbers were so hard to read. Though this one is easy enough. I. One, said Robert. And this? X. X is ten. Right. And this, my boy, is the year you were born. M C M L X X X V I. The first M means one thousand. C is 100, but because it comes before the second M, you must subtract it to get 900. L is 50, and X is 10. You add them together, which gives you 80. V is 5, which you add to our friend 1, and get 6. So this is 1,000 plus 900 plus 80 plus 6. Gosh, that's awfully complicated. Right again. And you know why? Because the Romans had no zero. I don't see the connection. Besides, what's so great about zero? Zero means nothing. Which is precisely why it is so brilliant about it. But why even call it a number? Nothing doesn't count. Don't be so sure. Remember how we divided up that piece of chewing gum among all those billions of people and hundreds of billions of mice? And how the portions got so small that in the end you couldn't see them, not even with a microscope? Well, we could have gone on forever without reaching zero. We'd have come closer and closer, but we'd never made it. So? So we've got to try something else. Minus, for instance. Yes, that should do the trick. He stretched out his walking stick and tapped the end of one of the ones. 
It shrank and shrank until it stood meek and manageable at Robert's feet. Go at it, said the number devil. What do you mean? Try the minus. One minus one equals. One minus one is zero, said Robert. Everyone knows that. You see? You see how necessary zero is. You can't do without it. But why do we need to write it? If nothing is left, why don't just leave it blank? Why invent a number for something that doesn't exist? Try this, then. One minus two equals. That's easy, said Robert. One minus two is minus one. Right. But look at what you get without a zero. Four, three, two, one. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. The difference between four and three is one. Between three and two, one. Between two and one, one. Between one and minus one, two. Which means there must be a number missing between one and minus one. That tricky little zero. I told you you couldn't do without it. That brings us back to the Romans. They reckoned they could. And look what happened. Instead of 1986, they had to fiddle with all those M's, C's, L's, X's, and V's. The Romans had to give each number a different letter, all because they didn't have zero. But what's that got to do with our chewing gum and the minus? Forget the chewing gum. Forget the minus. The zero's real beauty lies elsewhere. But you'll need to use your head to appreciate it. Are you up for it, or are you too tired? No, as long as I'm not sliding, I'm fine. In fact, I like it here on the mushroom. Good. Then let me give you a little problem to solve. Why is he suddenly being so nice to me? Robert wondered. I bet he's got something up his sleeve. But all he said was, fire away. And the number devil asked, nine plus one equals. Ten, Robert answered with like a shot. Is that all? How do you write it? I haven't got a pen. Then sky write it. Here, take my walking stick. Nine plus one equals ten. Robert wrote in purple cloud script. One and zero, the number devil said. One plus zero doesn't equal ten. Oh, come off it, Robert shouted. I didn't write one plus zero. I wrote one and a zero, and that's ten. And why, may I ask, is that ten? Because that's the way you write it. And why do you write it that way? Why, 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 Robert moaned. You're getting on my nerves. Want me to tell you? The number devil asked, leaning back leisurely on his mushroom. Long silence followed. Fine, go ahead, Robert blurted out when he couldn't bear it any longer. Simple. It comes from hopping. Hopping, Robert said scornfully. What's that supposed to mean? Numbers don't hop. Numbers hop if I tell them to hop, the number devil replied. Don't forget who you are dealing with. All right, all right, Robert said. Just tell me what you mean by hopping. Gladly. Let's go back to square one, or rather, the number one. One times one equals one. One times one times one equals one. One times one times one times one equals one. Tack on as many ones as you like, and you still get one of your answer. Sure, but what's your point? You'll see if you try the same thing with two. Okay, Robert said. Two times two is four. Two times two times two. Equals eight. Two times two times two times two equals sixteen. Two times two times two times two times two equals thirty-two. Wow, that goes fast. If I could go much further, I need my calculator. It goes even faster if you start with five. Why don't you give it a try? Five times five equals twenty-five. Five times five times five equals one twenty-five. Five times five times five times five equals six twenty-five. Five times five times five times five times five equals three thousand one hundred twenty-five. Five times five, five times five times five times five times five equals 15,625. Whoa, Robert shouted. Why do large numbers make you so jumpy? I can assure you that most large numbers are perfectly harmless. Says you, said Robert. Besides, I don't see the point of multiplying five to itself over and over. I'm coming to that. You know what the number devils does instead of writing all those boring fives? He writes. 5 to the first power equals 5. 5 to the second power equals 25. 5 to the third power equals 125. And so on. 5 to the first, 5 to the second, 5 to the third. In other words, I make the numbers hop. Now do you see? Do the same with 10, and it's as easy as pi. You can throw your calculator away. Make the 10 do one hop, and it remains exactly as is. 10 to the first power equals 10. 
Make it hop twice and you get 10 to the second power equals 100. Make it hop three times and you get 10 to the third power equals 1000. So if I make it hop five times, Robert cried, I get 100,000. One more and I get a million. And so on, till the cows come home, said the number devil. Simple, hey? Eh? That's the beauty of the zero. It lets you hold a space and move on. You can always tell a number's value by its position. The farther to the left it is, the more it's worth. The farther to the right, the less. When you write 555, five, five, you know the last five is worth exactly five and no more. The next to last five is worth five tens more. That is 50. And the first five is worth a hundred times the last one. That is 500. And why? because it's been hopped up front. Now, the fives of the ancient Romans could never be anything but fives. Why? Because the Romans didn't know how to hop. And why didn't they know how to hop? Because they had no zero to keep places, which meant they ended up with monstrosities like MCMLXXXVI. So rejoice, my boy. You're much better off than the Romans. With the help of friend zero, and a bit of hopping, you can produce any number, big or small, any number you please, 786, for instance. But I don't need 786. Really now, you're brighter than that. Try the year you were born, 1986. The number devil started growing again, and his mushroom followed suit. Well, what are you waiting for? He bellowed. Get a move on. There he goes again, thought Robert. Get him worked up about something, and he's impossible. Worse than Mr. Bockle. He carefully wrote a large one in the sky. Wrong, the number devil screamed. Dead wrong. How did I wind up with a fool like you? I told you to produce the number, not scribble it down. Robert would have given anything to wake up. I'm not going to put up with this, he thought, watching the number devil's head swell up and turn redder and redder. The end, the number devil called down to him. Robert stared back, completely at a loss. Start at the end, not the beginning. You say so, said Robert, who was in no mood to argue. He erased the one and wrote the six in its place. Finally caught on, have you? Well, then, we may proceed. No problem, said Robert wearily, though I'd appreciate it if you didn't fly off the handle over every detail. Sorry, but what do you expect? I'm the number devil, not Santa Claus. How do you like my six? The number devil shook his head and wrote, six times one equals six. But that's the same, Robert protested. You'll see what I have in mind. Now comes the eight. Don't forget to hop. Suddenly, Robert did see what he had in mind. He wrote, eight times ten equals eighty. I get it, he shouted before the number devil could tell him what to do. With nine, I make the ten hop twice. And he wrote, nine times one hundred equals nine hundred. And one times one thousand equals one thousand. That's a triple hop, he said. And now for the grand total... Six plus eighty plus ninety plus one thousand equals nineteen eighty-six. It's not so hard after all. I don't even need the number devil. So you don't need the number devil, huh? You're getting too big for your britches, boy. All you've had so far are the most ordinary numbers. Nothing to write home about. Wait till I start pulling numbers out of my hat. All kinds of numbers. Unreal numbers. Unreasonable numbers. You have no idea how many kinds of numbers there are. Numbers that run around in circles. Numbers that play tricks with your brain. Numbers that go on forever. As he spoke, his grin grew wider and wider. Robert could see all the teeth in his mouth. They too seemed to go on forever. And then he started twirling his walking stick in front of Robert's face again. Help! Robert screamed and woke up. Still in a daze the next morning, Robert said to his mother, Did you know the year I was born? It was six times one, and eight times ten, and nine times a hundred, and one times a thousand. I don't know what's going into that boy lately, said Robert's mother, shaking her head. Here, she added, handing him a cup of hot chocolate. Maybe this will help. You say the oddest things. Robert drank his hot chocolate in silence. There are some things you can't tell your mother, he thought. 